sons and daughters and all participants of al hidayah by the grace of almighty allah today we are starting with maulana rum and his masnavi message of maulana rum contained in his life as well as in his masnavi his masnavi consists of more than 30000 verses masnavi of maulana rum consists of more than 30000 verses He was born in 604 Hijra in Balkh their city at present is in Afghanistan Lot many awliya Allah and great aimatu tasawwuf and many great aimatu hadith they were born in this part of the world rather they start from bukhara and samarkand and nashapur and balkh and harat and come to the border of india and pakistan this is the special part of the world where many many aimatul hadith aimatul ilm and aimatul tasawwuf were born imam bukhari was born in bukhara in uzbekistan in central asia imam muslim was born in nashapur and nashapuri one of the a capital city of the province of khurasan very big province of iran capital city of khurasan and this Nashapur was the capital was the center of hundreds of aimatul hadith wal ilm and hundreds of aimatul tasawwuf wal wilaya hundreds if you go through the books of tabaqat tabaqatul muhaddisin tabaqatul awliya tabaqat ahli al ilm and you go to the books of tazkira and you go through the books of asma ur rijal written on their lives you will find hundreds and hundreds of the names everybody one way or the other belongs to nashapur and this is the place where imam bukhari came and stayed for long time and his shuyukh were also from nashapur some of his shuyukh some the imam tirmizi he also belonged to tirmiz a place near bukhara and samarkand the same country as uzbekistan the imam abu daud i am talking of ashab sitta siha sitta ashab siha sitta the great six aimma imams of hadith the fourth imam abu daud already he comes at number 3 because i mean imam muslim is student of imam bukhari and imam abu daud 
is not student of, he is neither student of Imam Bukhari nor of Imam Muslim. He is student of the shuyukh of Bukhari and Muslim. Imam Abu Dawood is class fellow of Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim. He received directly from their shuyukh. Imam Abu Dawood, a Sajistani. And then comes Imam Tirmazi, who is their student, Imam Tirmazi. So Imam Abu Dawood was also from these countries. Sajistan, some of the scholars, historians and specialists on Buldani Yat, Buldan, they say his village or town Sajistan was somewhere in Faras, in old Persia, in Iraq. But the scholars say that we couldn't find any city or any town in this name in that part of the world. This is other view. So it, is, it has not been found over there. So second view is that Sajistan was also in Khurasan, in Iran. And third view is that Sajistan was in Afghanistan, near Harat. Balkh and Harat in this line. So again, Imam Abu Dawood, a Sajistani, was Afghani. Aymatul Ilm, up till now. Originally, his Ayla belongs again to Central Asia. And hundreds of years before, they shifted to Arab world, probably to Maghrib and then to, and to Syria and Damascus, as I remember. That's why he is As-Sagarji, Sagarja. Then students of Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim all belong to these countries. His first student of Imam Bukhari, Imam Farabri. They are both words, Farabri or Firabri. He belonged to the same Ilaka Farabra. Their students, Imam Saraksi, belong to Saraksa, the same country. Central Asia, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, these countries. And then to Khurasan and Iran, and then to Afghanistan. And then Imam Nasai from Nasa, again from Iran. Imam Ibn Majah from Qazvin, again from Iran, the same province, Khurasan. You understand? <laughs> All these are Imma. Coming to the four Imams of Fiqh, except Imam Malik, he belonged to Medina. All the three belonged to other countries. Primarily at that time it was non-Arab world, at that time. Then after conquests, when this Arab world went on expanding, then they were included in Arab territory. Imam Azam Abu Hanifa belonged to Kufa in Baghdad. This, these cities were part of old Persia, Faris. Imam Shafi'i also originally did not belong to Mecca. He was born again in those countries. Then his family shifted there to Mecca and he was brought up there in Mecca. He studied over there and again he went back to Egypt. And he is buried in Egypt. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal studied in Haram and Sharifan, but he belonged to Baghdad. In those days, Baghdad was not a part of Arab. Because these were conquered in the days of Sayyidina Umar, then the days of Sayyidina Usman. And Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala, he made the first uh, army capital, the first Kent of the Islamic army, the Kufa was made an army capital over there. And Abd Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was appointed there as the chase of Sayyidina Umar, then the days of Sayyidina Usman. And Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala, he made the first uh, army capital, the first Kent of the Islamic army, 
the Kufa was made a, a army capital over there. And Abd Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was appointed there as the chief justice. And Muaz bin Jabal and various other Aimma amongst the Sahaba, they were appointed at various places to Yemen and here and there. And there are not many Aimma from Balkh. And Ruwat of Hadith. And Rijal of Say Muslim, and Rijal of Imam Bukhari, of Say Bukhari, and Rijal of Tirmazi and Abu Dawood from these cities, these countries. And many Aimma, the Ruwat of Say Al Bukhari was from Harat. They were Ar Haravi Yun, or Haraviz. Aimma, some was Imam Bushanji, Imam Haravi. All these were from Nesapur and these countries, and from Arad, and from Balkh. And Imam Abu Qasim al Qushayri from the same country, Nesapur. Imam Abu Durhaman al Sulami from the same area. Then Imam Behaki comes, then Imam Tabarani, and Imam Bazar, everybody from this part of the world. And Imam Abdul Razak from Sanaan. You go on naming one by one all of the Aimmatul Hadith, Aimmatul Ilm. Even the Sahaba and their Tabi'in, they had shifted to these parts of the world, to Damascus, to Syria, to Kufa, to Basra, to Yemen, to Egypt for propagation of Islam. And a time came that very few companions were left in Medina and 1500 companions used to reside in Kufa. Where Imam Azam Abu Hanifa was born. So this is a long different story. Where the Ilm was born and how the Ilm got expanded and where the Ilm was traveling from city to city and where the ilm was nourished and developed and flourished. So the same part of the world, Balf and Harat, Data Ganjubaksh Ali, Sayyidina Ali al Hujwari, also from Ghazni near Harat. Imam Abu Ismail Abdullah Al Ansari Al Haravi. Shaykh al-Islam fit the sub of Sahibu Manazil is Sairin from Harawi, from Harat. Imam Sijzi, the great Ravi of Sayyid al-Bukhari, he was from Harawi and he was murid and student Tirmiz of Shaykh al-Islam Abu Ismail al-Ansari, Sahibu Manazil is Sairin. He was his personal khadim, the Ravi of Sayyid bukhari so you see, this part of the world is very rich in all forms, the development and flourishment of all forms of ilm. So, Imam Jalaluddin Rumi was also born in this, this part of the world, Balkh. And he was grandson, maternal grandson of the king Muhammad Kharzam Shah, the Sultan Kharzam Shah. Then due to some political reasons, his father, a Shaykh Bahauddin al-Balkhi, along with his family and hundreds of their followers, hundreds of their followers and students and Marines, they had to leave from there. They have to migrate under some political pressures and jealousies and intrigues against them and problems. One thing has been always common among Ambiya and Oliya and that is Hijra. The whole history of Nubuwa and Vilaya. The whole history of prophethood and sainthood 
One more thing has been always common and that is migration. Traveling, migration, hijra. And the first hijra in this world took place in the life of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. He migrated from Jannah to earth. He was the first immigrant in this world. Although there were no visas, no passports, no jawazat, but he was the first immigrant who migrated from Jannah, who was asked to migrate from Jannah to, to the earth, to the earth, because there is a baraka in Hijrah. This was the first migration which took place in this world, human history. And there was a hikmah in this migration. This migration was not a punishment. This was a blessing. Because when he was coming to this earth, migrating, his Jannah dress of paradise was taken away from him. The, the dress, because the dress of paradise is for the people who live in paradise. Those who come out of the paradise, they can't wear their dress. So their dress was, he was, was taken away in order to come to this world for his migration, for his traveling and, and residing here. He needed a dress before he came to the earth. So he took the leaves of fig, the tree, fig, a thin, he got, there are big leaves of thin, the tree of fig. And he made dress, he covered his body with those leaves of thin, fig, fig leaves. He covered his body. And his covering of his body with these leaves was liked by Almighty Allah so much that apparently, apparently, it looks like punishment, apparently, but it isn't, it isn't. Because when he was covering his body with the leaves of fig, and he came down with the leaves of fig, the dress made with the leaves, Almighty Allah loved it, and he swore, Wattin, I swear by the leaves of fig, I swear by the fig, because this became the first dress of my beloved Prophet Adam. This is one of the fasir, one of the various exegetical interpretations. You have read, I think, I have mentioned in my book, Kashful Ghata, An Marifatil Aksami Lil Mustafa. So this was the migration in all Ambiya, Sayyidina Nu alayhi salam, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, Sayyidina Saleh alayhi salam, Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, up to Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, and Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam. Every prophet, Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam, more or less, every prophet, had migrated in his time. And the same happened in the lives of Oliya. They have been continuously migrating, <clears throat> traveling from place to place. They, never, they were never stationed for all of their life at one place. They were traveling. They were Kathir al-Asfar. That's why in every book of the Tasawwuf you will find a chapter on Safar. Safar is a chapter of the Tasawwuf. Safar is a chapter of the Tasawwuf. Subhanallah. Once I thought why it came to my mind. The reason is that the facilities which you get in Hadar, you never get in Safar. The facilities which you get in your own home, in your house. Safar is a chapter of the Subwoof. Subhanallah. Once I thought why it came to my mind. The reason is that the facilities which you get in Hadar, you never get in Safar. The facilities which you get in your own home, in your house, in, in Hadar, at your own place, you can't get all those facilities when you are in Safar, when you are traveling. 
And what does the subwoof mean? Depriving oneself of the facilities. Depriving oneself of these worldly facilities and enjoying the divine facilities, divine players. You can't enjoy the divine players unless you get deprived from the worldly facilities and players. You can't hold the both, either these players or those players. Again, this is a long story. There are many stories. So, Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi also migrated from Balkh to Iran, to Neshapur. And first meeting with one of the great saints of the time which he got in his childhood when he was about six, that was with Sheikh Fariduddin Attar. Then he came to Baghdad, then he came to Damascus, to Sham. And here in his childhood, young age, he met Sayyidina Ash-Shaykh al-Akbar, Muhyiddin ibn al-Arabi. And he was following his father, Ash-Shaykh Bahauddin al-Balkhi. When Sheikh Akbar saw both father and son, he commented, he said, a great ocean is following a small lake. And he was a child. These are the eyes of Oliya. He said, a great ocean is following a small lake. He meant a small, by small lake he meant his father and his spiritual status and position. And by ocean, he referred to Imam Jalaluddin Suyuti, the spiritual state which, station which he was going to achieve. And during their suffer, they keep on, they are promoting, they are being promoted to stage one, to stage to another, they are promoted to higher stage, then promoted to higher stage. So suffer is promotion, a way of a promotion. Subhanallah. Then he went to Halab and then to Kunia. Then he came back to Damascus and Halab and studies the Uloom of Sharia for seven to ten years in Halab and Damascus, Mulana Room. Then he settled finally in Kunia. You should keep in your mind, he was not just a Sufi. He was one of the great authorities of Uloom Sharia in his time. Great authorities on fiqh, great authorities on ilm, on hadith, on rational sciences of Islam. And people right from east to west used to come to him to get his verdict. He was a recognized universal authority on Islam. Such a great scholar he was. His life has a resemblance with the life of Sayyidina Imam al-Ghazali. He was also the, one of the greatest authorities of Islam. And Shaykh al-Jamiyah al nizamiyah he was Vice-Chancellor of Jamia al nizamiyah built by Tusi, Imam Ghazali. And finally, when these people reach the last border of ilm, then they realize that the whole world of this ilm cannot lead you to the ultimate truth. To the absolute reality which we were discussing and speaking about last night. The ilm, I mean al ulum zahira They can't lead you to the ultimate truth, to the ultimate reality. So after holding such a big and high position, and such a highly recognized seat of knowledge. He left, Imam Ghazali left the University of Nizamiya University and went into seclusion for 10 years. And there he wrote a book, Al Munkid Min Ad Dalal. And then he came to Ihya Ulum al Deen. Then he got the secrets, Asrar the mysteries, the secrets, and he started revealing the secrets of Deen and Ma'rifah. The same thing happened 
تو امام جلال الدین سیوت امام جلال الدین رومی رحمہ اللہ تعالی سنس دا ورڈ سیوتی کیم آؤٹ آف مائی مائنڈ ہی واز آلسو ون آف دا گریٹ سینٹس اینڈ صوفیا اینڈ اولیاء اف ہز ٹائم ناٹ اونلی اے مفسر اینڈ محدث اینڈ فقی نو ہی واز ون آف دا گریٹ اولیاء اینڈ ہی سو ہولی پروفٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم وائل ہی واز اویک ان ڈے ٹائم مور دین سیونٹی ٹائمز ہی میٹ ہولی پروفٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم امام جلال الدین سیوتی ان آسٹ ڈائریکٹلی سرٹن قویسٹنز آباؤٹ حدیث آباؤٹ دا شریعہ میٹرز فرم ہولی پروفٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم جس وہاں ہی واز دی مین اسکولر آف دیٹ کیلیبر دیٹ سٹیچر دی سیم آف امام نووی In Arab world, Imam Nawawi is regarded as the one of the most prominent and acceptable authorities of ilm. Sahibu Riyad al-Saliheen, whole Saudi Arabia, you find his book in every mosque. And Imam Nawawi was not just a muhaddis, he was one of the great awliya Allah. And when the king, the sultan of his time, he got angry with him, The people made some complaints against him. The jealous people, the jealous ulama. And the king wanted some investigations and inquiries, so he called him to his court. And Imam Nawawi was standing in front of the king of the time, in front of the governor. He wanted to punish him. He wanted to take some severe action against him. Imam Nawawi came to know about, about his intention. His intention was revealed to him. He was standing on a carpet. The carpet. And that carpet had pictures of lions and tigers on the carpet. Pictures of lions. And Imam Nawawi was standing on the carpet confronting the king in his court. When he found that he is about to announce the punishment or he is about to get hold of him and he is about to take a severe action, Imam Nawawi came in Jalal, became angry and he hit his foot on the carpet and the pictures, lions which were in pictures became live lions and stood right and left of Imam Nawawi, opening their mouth towards the king. He fell down and repented. This was the stature of Imam Nawawi. This is my verdict. Just take it as the, my, these words as verdict, a declaration. No person became Imam in Ilm unless he was a saint and Sufi. Nobody could become an Imam without being a great Sufi and Arif and a great Waliullah of his time. So, a time came in his life, he used to teach the books of Sharia, books of logic, of philosophy, of fiqh, Islamic law and jurisprudence on tafsir and hadith and all ulum sharia. He used to teach to his students. Hundreds and hundreds of students used to study under him and thousands of the talibin, the seekers of knowledge used to visit him. All of a sudden, a change occurred in his life. So his priority started changing priorities, his likings, direction of his life, direction of his thinking. Start, used to study under him and thousands of the talibin, the seekers of knowledge used to visit him. All of a sudden, a change occurred in his life. So his priority started changing priorities, his likings, direction of his life, direction of his thinking started changing. This was on one side. And there was a person on the other side, his name was Shamsuddin Tabrez. Imam Shamsuddin at Tabrezi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He had an ocean of ishq and ma'rifa in his heart. An endless 
devotion of love of Almighty Allah and his gnosis and deep understanding of Allah's attributes, ishq and ma'rifah. And he was in the last years of his life. And the Shamsuddin Tabrezi, he became upset and asked Almighty Allah, whom should I transfer this ocean to? Which I am having in my heart, and which you have created in my heart and in my spirit. Whom should I transfer this ocean to? He looked around and couldn't find anybody capable of that ocean. There may be many people claiming, but question is that who can digest the whole of ocean? Who can drink it and digest it and doesn't vomit? Many people, they do drink, but they vomit. There are many people who can't drink even a drop of the ocean of love, an ocean of ma'rifah. And there are some who just drink but a bowl or two bowls or three bowls. And there are certain people who drink like canals. And there are some people who drink like seas. And there are some people who drink like oceans. And Hazrat Khaja Fariduddin Ganja Shakar Radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, the Shaykh of Khaja Nizamuddin Awliya of Delhi and student of Khaja Qutbuddin Mukhtiyar Al Khaki and grand student of Khaja Muinuddin Ajmeri, Baba Fariduddin Ganja Shakar Mas'ud Rahimahullahu ta'ala, Quddis Asirul Aziz. Once he mentioned this thing, there are some people, there are some who just drink a bowl of wine of love and ma'rifah and they can't bear it, they can't hold it. They become out of the control. And then he said, there are some, some who drink up to seven oceans of the ishq and ma'rifah of Allah, up to seven oceans, and they never let the people know but they have even drunk a single sip. They never people love no. They just live among the people as a common man. And nobody knows that he is the one who has drunk seven oceans of love and marifa. They have such a sound control. And then he cried and became senseless for a while. He was lost. He was absorbed. So, Shamsuddin Tabrezi, he asked Almighty Allah, oh my God, oh my Lord, show me someone whom I could transfer this ocean to. And on that side, in Konya, he was in Tabrez. And in Konya, Molana room, he had already changed his mind. And he was looking for a person who was holding the ocean of ishq and marifa in his heart so that he may drink from him. This was an incident, a coincidence. How the seeker, the thirsty and ocean, they meet together. How the thirsty, the true seeker, and the person having the ocean, how they meet together. And here I would read certain verses describing this situation. They are not of Molana Room. They have, they, they, these are translation in Urdu of Molana Room's statement. <laughs> Saman Rumi ka hua Shams Tabrezi ne ki haq se dua
this we will come to this way when we read the Masnavi. اے خدا جو آگ میرے دل میں ہے جو تڑپ اس نیم جان بسمل میں ہے اے خدا ملتا کوئی بندہ مجھے This is a different way of reading اے خدا ملتا کوئی بندہ مجھے جو صحیح معنوں میں ہو لائق تیرے This is request of حضرت شمس الدین تبریزی وقت رخصت کا ہے اب میرا قریب کس کو سوپوں یہ امانت اے حبیب پس اچانک غیب سے آئی ندا شمس تبریزی تو فوراں روم جا مولوی رومی کو کر مولا روم مولوی رومی کو کر مولا روم اس کو فارغ کر تو از غوغا روم He received the message from Almighty Allah Go to Rome, to Kunia. And there is a Molvi Rumi. He is a Molavi. And convert him to Maulai Rum. And make him Maulai Rum. And take him away. And take him out of the whole troubles of this room, this world. So he arrived there. There was a meeting. I don't want to go into the details. And Molana Rum left his seat and stayed with him in a room in seclusion, just two of them, the whole day and night looking each other, eyes to eyes, staying together, listening to him, watching him, seeing him, receiving from him, drinking from him, and a fountain of Ishq and Marifa was opened in the heart of Molairum. He became Molairum. And then Molairum, Molana Rumi says at this point, نعرہِ مستانہ خوش می آیدم تا عبد جانا چنی می بات And then مولای روم مولانا رومی says at this point نعرہِ مستانہ خوش می آیدم تا عبد جانا چنی می بایدم He said now this slogan of عشق this slogan of madness has become love of my heart. I love this slogan of madness, this condition of madness. And I want to remain mad in love of my beloved till the day of judgment. Now you don't want to come back to senses. I don't want to come back, go back towards the reasonings and logics and philosophies and sciences just I want to remain mad till the day of judgment 
when this happened so after a couple of months there was a very huge cry and problem and in the whole of Konya, his sons, his students, his colleagues, organizers of the his college, his university, his Darul Uloom, the knowledge seekers, everybody got against Shams Tabrez. They thought that he has snatched our Sheikh from him and he has made him mad. So there was a jealousy against him. Because of this he left Konya. He left Konya, Shams Tabrez, went to Damascus or somewhere else. And now Molana Rum got upset. Now he tastes the pain of detachment. He tastes the pains of isolation. He tastes the pains of remaining away and far from his beloved. And, he's, and it is said, Azfarakat talkh shud ayyam ma Dur shud az jaan ma aram ma he said, Oh my beloved, since you have left me, my whole life has become restless. Now there is a rest in this restlessness. Since you have left me, my whole life has become restless. And everything has been snatched from me. I can't sleep, I can't have rest, I can't smile, I can't laugh, I can't enjoy living in this world. So this was his condition. When his sons, his students, his colleagues, other scholars, the knowledge seekers, the true and faithful and loyal friends of Maulana Rum saw his condition, they thought it is necessary for his life to bring Shamsuddin Tabrezi back to Kuniya so that he may again come to life at least. Then he came back and the great scholar of the time, he became like a beggar in front of him and he used to hold his things. Wherever he used to go, just he first of all he went city to city, village to village to find him to in his search. And Molana Rum himself says, Ichuni Sheikh Gada Kubaku Ishk Ahmad La Ubali Fataku. The same great authority of the Islamic world, like a beggar, crying, screaming, tears on his face, upset like mad people, along with hundreds of his students and lovers, he is going and finding his beloved in various streets, from streets to streets, from villages to villages, from towns to towns. And then Molana Rum says, when Ishq comes, love enters into your heart, love makes you a beggar. And then he says, he gives a lesson to the people, lesson. <laughs> Peshe marde kaam le paamal sho He 
says you can't achieve anything with your speeches, through your speeches, through your durus, through your lecture, through your kal. You should come out of kal and enter into the valley of hal. Don't remain the, the man of speech, try to become the man of state. And this only happens when you sit in feet of some lover of Allah. If you sit in the feet, in the ashik of some ashik of Almighty Allah. And again he gives us a lesson. Maulvi har gizna shud maulai rum tahula me shams tabre zi na shud He says, I was just a Maulavi, an alim, a scholar, a philosopher. I never became Maulai Rum. I could never become Maulai Rum unless I had not become the beggar and slave of Shams Tabrez. I became Maulai Rum only when I became a slave of Shams Tabrez. Then he says, Sheikh Bashad Nirdban Asma Tire Parra Az Kehgar Dad Az Kama. He says, You see the arrow, it goes very fast and enters into the prey and goes out of the prey. It goes very fast. But this very fast speed of the arrow is not its own speed. It is not its own speed. Although you see arrow going fast. You see the arrow going fast. But he says this is not the speed of arrow itself on its own. This is the power in fact with which this arrow was sent. Kama, what do you say the Kama? This is the power of bow, the strength of bow and the strength of the person, the specialist who has used the bow and that is behind the arrow which is giving the speed. He concerned how is the Talib the seeker, relationship of the seeker and his Sheikh. And then he says, give another lesson. Khabra biguzar im shab apidar yakshabe. The seeker, relationship of the seeker and his sheikh. And then he says, give another lesson. Khabra Biguzar im shab apidar yakshabe dar kuwebe khaba guzar. Then he says, Oh, my son, addresses to the people, Oh, my son, if you don't understand. All these secrets and this phenomena, how does it happen? He says, then leave your bedroom, leave your house, leave your facilities and rests of your life and come and spend some nights with those who are sleepless. Hi, 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 hi. Hi, hi, hi. He says, Come this night and spend some nights with those who are sleepless and try to spend some time of your life in the street of the sleepless people and see their conditions and what is happening over there. Only then you would be able to 
estimate the states and conditions and positions of those who have drunk the oceans of love of Almighty Allah. Oliara Darduruha Nagmahast Taliban Raza Haya Tebebahast These Oliya, these lovers of Allah the true friends of Almighty Allah, the great saints, there are, when you will come to their street, when you will spend some, life, some nights of your life with them, and you will taste, enjoy the taste of sleeplessness, then you will find that there are thousands and thousands and millions of the divine songs in their heart, in their soul, and in their spirit. There are millions of divine songs. And the fountains where the divine songs of Allah's love are coming out. And from those fountains of love, and from those fountains, songs of Marifa of Almighty Allah, these only are always getting their eternal life. They are getting the strength for their life. Bini andar khud ulu me ambiya be kitabu be muido usta. He said, These are the people who do not just rely on the books. They get the knowledge of Sharia through books. And the one who does not seek knowledge of Sharia through books, I mean from Quran and Hadith and Sunnah, they get astray. But the whole sum of their knowledge is not just based on the books. They have some other source of knowledge too. And that is a direct connection with divinity. They get directly connected with the They directly get connected with Almighty Allah's heavenly world. They get connected with Malakut and Jabarut and Lahut. That's why beyond the world of Ruh, they get connected with Ruh. And beyond the world of Ruh, they get connected with Sir, the world of secret. And the world of mysteries. And the world of secrets of secrets. They are each and every internal organ of their body. And each and every spiritual entity of their body gets connected somewhere. And every world beyond this world is a source of knowledge is a source of secret, is a source of mysteries. And they start getting direct revelation, not revelation of prophethood. This is ilham, asrar, the knowledge of secrets. This knowledge is directly revealed onto their heart and onto their soul and onto their spirit. And they get connected directly with the Holy Prophet وسلم, and the spirits of prophets and they get knowledge directly from them. And then finally he says, Peshehu Jehun Ha Zanu Zanad He says their heart becomes like a pitcher. Their heart becomes a pitcher. And then he gives an example. He says 
here is a picture which is connected by the ocean a picture of heart is connected with an ocean an ocean is a place where we will never get dry ocean never dries apparently you see the picture is a smaller body as compared to a river and jehun is a river jehun is a rename of a river said so look at a river sometimes you see there is water full of water and some a time comes when there are no rains it gets dry so on the one hand there is a river which can get dry and on one hand there is a picture which never dries because it is connected with an ocean and always keeps on getting water from the ocean so the heart of oliya is like a picture which is connected with the secrets of ocean of almighty allah so their knowledge never ends there is no end to their knowledge they always keep on getting new secrets and new mysteries and they always keep on getting new and new discoveries this was a background of molana room and his thought and his message now when we will start studying the first chapter first two chapters of masnavi molana room you see he has mentioned a story first of all he talks about the crying of the soul crying of the spirit then i'll explain why is the spirit crying what is the secret behind her screaming and then you when we come to the next thing you will see he gives an example of a king an example of his concubine his handmaiden and then he gives an example of a goldsmith and he gives an example of a very competent physician a doctor he mentions four characters character of a king then character of a lady who is his concubine like a wife or handmaiden and then third character of a competent physician and a doctor and the fourth character is zargar is the goldsmith by king he mean ruh sultan now molana room will never say this thing in his verses that king is sultan king is ruh and who is who just he will just keep on speaking and giving his message in metaphorical language and figurative language and metaphorical language in hints so i am just giving you the base when he speaks of the king he is speaking of ruh and when he speaks of the lady who is who has become beloved of the king the concubine the handmaiden he the king has started loving that lady so that concubine or handmaiden is the nafs ruh itself has fallen prey to nafs which means that nafs has won the battle and ruh is being defeated and the competent physician and doctor who comes for treatment he is the sheikh a sheikh ul kamil and the goldsmith is dunya is dunya and the whole thing is regarding the treatment of nafs the treatment of nafs and let me tell as a last point before we enter into the first chapter of masnavi that nafs of everybody requires treatment according to his own stage there is no person in this world except the prophets except the prophets they are masoom
There is no person in this world who can say that now I have achieved a stature or a station where I don't need any care of treatment and purification of nafs. Although the nafs becomes protected, although the nafs becomes mutmainna and radiya, the nafs become self-assured, although the nafs becomes pleasing and contenting, although the nafs, the human soul, becomes pleased and contented one, and although the nafs, the human soul, sometimes become protected and purified and perfect, and although that nafs and soul sometimes become in the nearness of Almighty Allah, in spite of achieving all these attributes, in spite of being promoted from one state to other, from other state to other, continuous promotion can take place. But even at every stage the soul achieves, there are some other tests for him, for the man, having that particular stature of nafs. Because the Iblis and Shaitan keeps on attacking on that soul and he determines the nature of attack according to the stature of the man, according to the stature of Wali. He keeps on attacking. But at some places he is successful, at some places he is defeated, Shaitan. This is Allah's blessing. So everybody, he may become Imamul Awliya, he may become head of the saints, even then he, he is not become out of the need, he has not been freed. But at some places he is successful, at some places he is defeated, Shaitan. This is Allah's blessing. So everybody, he may become Imamul Awliya, he may become head of the saints, even then he, he is not become out of the need, he has not been freed of the need and necessity of purification of soul. It is a continuous process which never discontinues, which never breaks. So everyone at every state and position and station feels a specific need and necessity of self-purification. And Molana Rum has given a very beautiful example for this particular thing which I have explained. A very beautiful example of Imam Abul Hasan Al Khirqani. Imam Abul Hasan Al Khirqani. He has quoted a nice example of his life. He was Imam Al Awliya and Sultan Al Arifin. He says that one of his disciples, one of his students living in a village far from him, he experienced a state of contraction in his heart. When you feel a condition or a state of contraction, state of kab in your heart, in your batin, in your inner self, this is spiritual contraction. So the man who experiences this contraction feels as if he was going to be demoted. He feels as if he is being demoted. And he feels as if Almighty Allah has become angry with him. And he feels as if Allah and his beloved is not pleased with him. And he feels as if he is being deprived of certain things. And he is coming down. These are his feelings of contraction. He feels upset, frustrated, disturbed. But the reality is that this contraction comes for his promotion. 
I would like to explain in my words very specific thing. Apparently, the expansion, the state of must expansion looks very nice and beautiful condition. But that is an enjoyment of spiritual advancement. Expansion is an enjoyment is a player which takes place, which is experienced, which is felt because of the promoted spiritual stages of a man. But expansion and bust itself does not promote you to the higher stage. It is an enjoyment of promotion. It, it itself is not a promotion, neither a promotion nor a means of promotion. It is just an enjoyment and pleasure as a result of promotion. Where promotion, spiritual promotion takes place and when promotion takes place, promotion takes place during the state of contraction and you feel as if he is angry with me but in fact he is happy with you. Because during the state of expansion when you enjoy, you experience a player, you feel that you have been promoted up to a higher place. When you feel that you are being promoted and you have been promoted, so this feeling of promotion and this sense of promotion and this appreciation of promotion sometimes create, can create an arrogance in your nerves. When you appreciate that you are being promoted and Allah is happy with you and pleased with you and you are attaining the higher grades, so appreciation of this fact sometimes may create some pride in your heart. And this pride may lead you to an arrogance. So what does Allah do? Almighty Allah, to protect you from pride, to protect his friends, his awliya, his sincere people, to protect them from the damages of pride, to protect them from the damages of arrogance, to protect them from the evil effects of the soul with this appreciation. He puts you into the state of contraction where you feel, oh, what has occurred to me? My Lord is angry with me. He feels that I am being demoted. I am being deprived of certain things. So with this feeling he starts crying. He starts screaming. He becomes upset. He becomes restless. He goes more to repentance. To worship Almighty Allah. To repentance. To worship. To taqwa. To zuhud. To wara to abstinence. So he strives and struggles more and more to come out of the state of contraction. So the efforts which he does to come out of extraction, these are the efforts which take him at a very, very high stage, which the state of expansion cannot do. So now you are in a position to understand if I utter one sentence about Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. Those people are wrong in their understanding. They are wrong in their understanding, in their concept. Why Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam was taken out of Jannah? And why the Hubud took place? Why he was sent from Jannah to earth? Some people think as if this was demotion. I say no, this was a promotion. Because Hubut of Adam to earth was a state of contraction and stay in Jannah was a state of expansion. He was happy and pleased during his stay in Jannah. He was in a state of enjoyment. He was in a state of pleasure. He was in a state of happiness because he was feeling the nearness of Almighty Allah. He was appreciating his, his pleasure. He was appreciating his closeness.
he was appreciating and feeling the players of his company almighty allah wanted to promote him promote him to what level almighty allah decided to promote him to the level of khalifa he wanted and decided to promote him to the level of his vicegerent he wanted to place him at the level of his naib of his deputy for the whole world and it was not possible if he stayed in jannah so what he did he put an idea in his heart to eat that particular fruit of the tree which was prohibited he ate it and because of eating that fruit he questioned him and question of almighty allah created a state of contraction for him this questioning created a state of con contraction and if somebody thinks that he did a mistake or he mazalla committed any sin he committed any sin that's wrong because almighty allah himself witnessed for him he himself witnessed for him and he himself gave an evidence in his defense in holy quran and he stated lam najid lahu azma god say that my adam sinned who is better than me and who could better see in his heart allah says lam najid lahu azma i saw into his heart and i never saw any intention or any uh, thinking of disobedience in his heart allah witnessed that najid lahu azma god say that my adam sinned who is better than me and who could better see in his heart allah says lam najid lahu azma i saw into his heart and i never saw any intention or any uh, thinking of disobedience in his heart allah witnessed that there was no disobedience in his heart this is allah is witnessing defending sayyidina adam alai salam's position lam najid lahu azma we never find any motive intention of disobedience in his heart what to take what to talk of act amal takes place after azm azm is irada a combination of niyya and irada a combination of motive and intention this is azm and act is the fi'il and amal which takes place after this state of azm if there is no azm no motive and intention then there is no gunah no act of sin he said we didn't find any motive and intention of disobedience in his heart so don't blame my beloved prophet adam then we asked almighty allah then what would you we say whatever was whatever took place so what should we say what would be the caption and heading of that act he said fanasiya just this was just a nisyan a forgetfulness I, I, this is allah's decree and judgment this was just a forgetfulness he just forgot and if you forget and eat during your fasting if you forget that you are fasting or not and you eat whether your fast would remain or it would be broken if in spite of eating your fast does not break so in spite of eating of adam how does his fast of spiritual position is breaking he said fanasiya this was just forgetfulness and this forget condition of forgetfulness was created into him in his life so that i may question him and just my single word why my single word why did you eat it this one sentence will give him put him in the state of contraction and through contraction he will start crying and the tears promote the people to higher stage otherwise he would never have cried and screamed so hubut was contraction and through dependence khilafa was his expansion and he when his beloved friends and his ashiqeen and lovers 
when they cry and scream during nights, during repentance, when they cry, he feels very, very happy in hearing their cries, huge and cries. He feels pleased. Why? Because, because of their screaming and crying, this is his this is his decree and this is his way of promoting. He keeps on promoting his people to the higher stages. Apne divano ke nano se wo khush hote hain. Apne ushak. से वो खुश होते हैं पसे दीवार सुना करते हैं शेवन उनका वेन ई फाइंड हिज लवर्स ड्यूरिंग नाइट्स दे आर क्राइंग एंड स्क्रीमिंग फॉर हिम ही लवज हियरिंग दे आर स्क्रीनिंग एंड क्राइम बिहाइंड द वॉल because crying is repentance and repentance is the stair of promotion crying is repentance and repentance is the stair of promotion means of promotion so the things happen with everybody with everyone for his promotion according to his position station and state so morana room mentions that one of his followers and students and disciples had a state of contraction. He was very upset. He couldn't understand what is happening to me. So he ran to his sheikh, Kharqan, to place his problem in front of his sheikh and to get some guidance. When he arrived there, he went to the sheikh's house And he found that his sheikh was not there. Imam Abu Hassan Al Kharqani, he was not there. He was not at his home, at his residence. Then he knocked the door. His wife asked, Who are you and where you have come from? The wife of Hazrat Imam Abu Hassan Al Kharqani, the Imam of Oliya and Sultan of Arifin the great leader of the saints. His wife was a short-tempered lady. He was a bit hot. She used to exchange hot words. She used to sometimes to shout at him. She was an angry lady. She asked, who are you? Where are you come? Where have you come from? He said, I am one of humble servants and disciples and students of Sheikh. I have come from very far to see him. I am in a trouble. I want to seek his guidance and spiritual help. She replied, you couldn't find any other better person than him? <laughs> he is the one you have come so far for him? You know him better or I know him better? I am his wife. <laughs> so she gave a full speech. On Sheikh Abu Hassan Al Khirkani, she gave a full speech as a wife. She delivered a full lecture on him. You know, you know better of your about your Sheikh, or I know better. I live with him the whole. I have spent my whole life with him. Go and seek somebody else who is better than him. You can't get anything from him. So he had come there with with unrestfulness, with frustration with the problem of contraction and now another contraction was added to him <laughs> and he was continuously thinking what, what, what happened to my sheikh his wife is saying these kind of things about him she is not happy with him and she is saying some wrong things about him and she is so angry on him he started crying then somebody met he met somebody in the street. He said, why are you crying? He just told him that he wanted to see his sheikh, Hazrat Imam Abu Hassan al-Khirqani. 
he said he must be in the jungle in the forest collecting some woods go and try to see him find him in the forest he went to the forest this is the story of treatment of nafs is required and needed for everyone on this subject Maulana Rumi has quoted the story and then we will straight away come to the story of Ruh, spirit and soul just finalizing this matter that the treatment for soul is required for everybody so he went to the forest and he was shocked to see that his sheikh was coming and riding on the back of the lion so he saw him he was riding on the back of a lion and holding a very big snake in his hands a poisonous snake in his hand and coming with the wood which he has selected chosen collected from the forest he again this was the third time he again started crying now he, he was considering look at the spiritual condition and station of my sheikh and look at his position in his house and coming with the wood which he has selected chosen collected from the forest he again this was the third time he again started crying now he, he was considering look at the spiritual condition and station of my sheikh and look at his position in his house the spiritual station of my sheikh that the lions and snakes are his slaves the lions and snakes are his slaves and look at the position of his wife wife is not his slave <laughs> and definitely wives are not they are equal partners so she exercises her equality she was exercising her equality so when he when sheikh abul hasan khirqani saw him screaming crying out of control he understood the whole story he called him he said did you visit my house he said yes did you hear something from my wife he said yes i heard sheikh abul hasan khirqani said almighty allah has made her the treatment of my nafs she is my doctor she is always she is with me for the treatment of my nafs this is what almighty allah has decreed because i am always in the position of promotion spiritual promotion from stage to stage and i am always in the position of expansion must and i am always continue in a continuous position of promotions so almighty allah wants me wants to protect me from pride he wants to protect my soul from pride when i watch and appreciate my promotions he wants to protect me from the pride because pride enters into the heart through soul when you appreciate your spiritual promotions so whenever there is any possibility of this loss and damage she cures me with her words when she shouts at me when she is angry she say wrong words about me so this is the spiritual treatment of my nafs i at that time say to my nafs oh soul of abul hasan khirqani you are what she is saying this is your position this is your reality so almighty allah has kept her for the cure and treatment of my nafs and the treatment is given to every wali according to his own stature now we are opening the masnavi of maulana room this consists of i told you 30000 verses and this is known to be the great compendium on tasawwuf on the principles of tasawwuf and ma'rifa now the teaching and studying the masnavi of maulana room 
is seized. No more existing in the world. There was a time when great scholars and ulama used to study Masnavi of Maulana Rum as a text of the classical text of Islamic sciences. And many other books of the Subhuf were included as the textbooks of the classical Islamic syllabi. Now Maulana Rum starts his Masnavi from the story of crying and complaint of the spirit. He says, Vishnu Azne Chuhi Kayat Me Kunad Vazjudai Haashikayat Me Kunad Kazna Ista Tamara Babarida Aznafiram Mardozan Nalidan Sinaham Sharha Sharha Azfiraq Tabigoyan Sharh Dard Ishtiyak Mulana Rum says, listen to the reed Vishnu Azneh, listen to the reed how it tells a tale, how it tells a story. Chu hikayat me kunat. Vaz judai ha shikayat me kunat. It is complaining of separations. Hai, hai, hai. Judai ha. This is plural. He has, not stayed, he has not said that she, the te, reed is complaining of separation. No. Says that reed is complaining of separations. There are many separations which she is complaining about. Many separations took place when the spirit was transferred from heavens to this world. And the spirit was imprisoned in the prison of human body. One separation took place from its original homeland and that was the world of spirits, Alamul Arwah, the world of Nur, where other spirits and the angels used to live and where was a complete atmosphere of worshipping, of worship of Allah, an atmosphere of Allah's praise, and a spiritual atmosphere of Allah's lights which were showering whole day and night. Then separation from her companies, from spiritual companies, spiritual friendships. Then separation from the nearness of Almighty Allah where he used to ask alastu bi rabbikum am i not your lord and these spirits used to reply kalu bala why not o our lord these spirits used to speak to their lord so she is complaining of these separations that she left her homeland that was Alamul Malakut and came to a strange land that is Alam in Nasut. <laughs> this vegetal, this materialistic world, temporal world. 
And then Maulana Rum says <clears throat> that Reed says, ever since I was parted from the reed bed, since he is giving an example of the ruh in the beginning, like a reed, reed is the ruh. And the tree, she says, since I was cut from my tree, from my reed bed, my lament, my crying, my screaming has caused the man and the woman to mourn. My lamenting, my screaming, my crying has made them unrest, has put them into trouble. My crying, my screaming has caused the man and the woman to mourn. My lamenting, my screaming, my crying has made them unrest, has put them into trouble because they hear me crying and they hear me screaming but they don't understand why I am crying. They don't understand the cause. They don't appreciate the reason behind my screaming, my complaint. They get upset. And then Maulana Rum says, again in the words of the reed, I want a bosom torn by spherens. I want a heart which is already torn into pieces because of love. I need a heart which is torn into pieces with the knife of love. A heart which is torn into pieces. Only then I can unfold to such a one the pain of my love, the pain of my wish, the pain of my desire and the pain of my complaint. If I get some heart which is torn into pieces, a heart which is aware of the pain of separation, only to that heart I can unfold, I can reveal and I can describe the secrets of my pain and my crying. Har kase ko dur asle Baz jo yad Ruz gaar Vasl khesh Then he says everyone who is left far from his source from his homeland from his origin anything in this world any person any soul everyone who is left far, who has been departed and detached from his origin and source, always wishes back time when he was united with it. Reed says, this is not something new with me. And don't take it a new story. This is just a common phenomena. Anyone who is departed from his homeland, who is departed from his original company of friends who has departed from his home always wishes to go back to his origin and always remembers and wishes back the time when he was united with them. The same has happened to me. This is what spirit is complaining. Since I have been separated from my origin and imprisoned in the prison of body, kept in the prison of body, since that day, I also, like other people, I also wish 
back the time when I was united with my original home. Man bahar jamiyat nala shudam جفت خوشحا لا بدھا لا شدم ہر کسے از زن خود شد یار من وزدرون من نجست اسرار من اگین دی ریڈ سیز آئی ہیو اٹرڈ مائی ویلفل نوٹس ڈسکرپشن آف مائی ڈیزائر the complaints of my separation, my pains, I have uttered, I have spoken out, I try to tell to everyone who got the company of mine. Any company I get in this world, I got in this world, I try to explain the secret of my pain. I concerted with the unhappy people, and with them those rejoice khushala and badhala he refers to the pious people and refers to the unpious people he says in this world i got various companies the spirit is saying spirit is one it is a unity and reflections he says i got the company of pious and good people khushala those people who live in a good state and she says that I received sometimes and many times in this world a company of bad people who are living in a bad spiritual state I received various companies when I came to this world and whether somebody was pious good or bad I try to explain my pain and secret of my complaint to everyone, to every company which I received. Then he says, after listening to my complaint, after listening to my pain, everyone became my friend. Everyone became my friend but from his own opinion according to his own standard of understanding according to his own view and vision whatever he understood from my complaint and from my crying so according to his own understanding according to his own level of wisdom everybody tried to become my friend and try to share my grief and sorrow but none of them sought out my secrets from within me everybody tried to become my friend everybody tried to live in my company everybody tried to provide his company to me so that I may reduce or decrease the sense of separation I may feel sense of some company and attachment. Everybody tried to share my sorrow, my grief, my pain. But according to his own standard of wisdom, his own standard of understanding, his own standard of vision, his own standard of point of view, but nobody actually sought the real secret of my crying and screaming and disturbance. The reason is that there were many people in this world who feel pain in their life. But everyone who met me, who came in my company and, and tried to console me, 
he tried according to his own experience somebody had a very big loss in his business he thought that as if I had also a big loss in my business that why I am crying somebody everyone who met me who came in my company and, and tried to console me he tried according to his own experience somebody had a very big loss in his business he thought that as if I had also a big loss in my business that why I am crying somebody had lost his wife he thought probably I am also a divorcee that's why I am crying or somebody lost his husband separated from her husband from her partner he thought I am also crying because of some this kind of worldly separation somebody was given some punishment somebody had some other sorrow and fear and problem in this worldly life so everybody tried to console me tried to provide to share his my grief and sorrow according to his own experience everybody considered my pain in the light of his own pain and experience then molana room says in the words of the reed sirman aznalae man durne est lek chashmo goshra anurne से जानो जाजे तन मस्तूर ने लेख कसरा दी दे जा दस्तूर ने देन द रीड सेज my secret is not far my secret is not far from my plant my secret is not far from my life my secret is not far from my soul from my spirit from my inner self it is in my inner self it is not far from me my secret is not far from me from myself but the question is in instead of all this reality he says the problem is that the ear and i lack the light of apprehension ear can just hear and eyes can only see but both ear and i they cannot understand ear just hear does the ears understand what they hear eyes see the things but do they understand so the read the read molana room in the language of read says that my secret is not far from myself secret is within me and i have eyes and i have ears too but eyes can see they can't understand ears can hear but they can't understand this is the position of the whole world the people are like eyes and hear the people are like eyes and ears they see me but they don't understand me they hear me but they don't understand me why i am crying why i am complaining and why i am so much disturbed this is the reason that eyes and ears cannot understand the reason behind my complaining <laughs> and then he gives another example he says the body is not veiled from soul from spirit the body this body is not far from the spirit can you 
create any partition and separation between the body and spirit although they are different and separate entities but you physically cannot separate them from each other cannot differentiate so they are so closer they are so closer then she says that my spirit is not veiled is not covered from my body but yet nor my body are permitted to see neither the body nor the nafs nor the eyes nor the ear nor the organs they are not permitted to see the reality of my spirit they can't see me that's why they can't understand me they hear me but they can't understand me Then Maulana Rum comes further and he says about Ham chune zahre vatariya ke kedid Ham chune dam saaz o mushta ke kedid he say who has seen a poison whoever has seen the poison an antidote like the reed has ever seen have you ever seen a poison at the same time and the treatment of the poison he says either there would be a poison and poison itself is not its treatment treatment is something else but this is a strange thing that this na and this crying itself is a poison and this is itself the treatment this is a poison and treatment and cure as well for whom the crying he says the crying is a poison for body this explanation it has dual character the character of being poison and character of being medicine why he says the crying the restlessness the disturbances the upset being upset this is a poison for body because body is weakened because of up unrestness and this is the cure and treatment for the ruh the crying this is poison for the body body becomes ill and this crying is the treatment for the ruh for the spirit spirit becomes purified and spirit becomes re re promoted because of crying and pain so he says that this, this pain has a dual character this pain is a poison for the body and the treatment for the spirit then molana room says in the words of he, he explains mehram e ihosh juz behosh ne marzubara Mushtari Chungosh Nest. says that only to the senseless is this sense confided. This is a special sense which he says, which I have explained. that pain at the same time is a poison and is a treatment this is zahar poison and this is taryak the cure of that poison and molana room says that this is a matter of special sense a special we explained that pain at the same time is a poison 
end is a treatment. This is zahar poison and this is taryak, the cure of that poison. And Maulana Rum says that this is a matter of special sense, a special wisdom, a special understanding. And he says that this sense would be appreciated only by those who become senseless. This sense would be available only to those who become senseless. So there is another sense which opens like a fountain when one becomes senseless. So there is a sense in being senseless. Sense in senselessness. If you become behosh, senseless, only then you will achieve this sense which I have stated above. When he talks about the senseless, behosh, the senseless, he means try your people. He says, oh my sons, O oh, lovers of Almighty Allah and those who want to understand the complaint of spirit and those who want to become connected with the divinity, with Lord, those who be, want to become the lovers of Almighty Allah, what they should do, they should try to become senseless. What does it mean? That they should lose the sense of the lust of this world. There are two kinds of sense. One sense refers to the lust of this world. The greed of this world. So there are lot many lusts, material lusts, the lust of position in this world, the lust of power, the lust of money, the lust of wealth, the sexual lusts, the lust of soul, lust for arrogance, Lust for respect, being respected. Lust of the gains of this world. Lust of the monetary, monetary interests in this world. This corporeal world. This material world. He says there are hundreds and thousands of lusts and greeds. And you have a sense, you know. That's why you are working and striving hard to achieve these things. Because there is a sense behind these actions, behind the struggle. If you are not respected anywhere, you, you become angry. You think that I deserve this respect, which I was not given. He says, this is the sense of this world. If somebody does not stand for you, you become angry. You are not pleased with him. And you think whether you utter from your mouth or not. But you think this is some disrespectful man. He doesn't respect me. You are not happy with him. This is a sense of being respected. You want to collect more and more money and wealth. You want to collect more and more power of this world. More and more positions in this world. This is a sense which instigate you, which pushes you toward these ends, which throws you in the ocean of this lust and you get drowned. He says this is one sense. This is the sense, in other words, known as lust. Hubbu shahawat. He says this is a sense which we are having and this sense is controlling our life we are under the control of this sense under the control of this lust when Molana Rum says mehrame e hosh juz bi hosh you can't get 
the sense unless you become senseless now he talks that try to become senseless it means try to become lustless try to take greed out of your soul try try to take greed out of your soul try to take wishes out of your soul try to purify your spirit your heart from all of these lusts and the sense behind these lusts which is functioning behind the lusts in greeds he says this is the meaning of becoming senseless and moreover this is the sense of other things about you then there is higher stage of becoming senseless this is the lower stage of senselessness and then there is a higher stage of senselessness this lower stage is to forget masib allah all lusts which you feel in your heart about other things in your environment in your atmosphere in this world and the higher stage of becoming senseless is to finish the sense of your own self that you exist if if you achieve the denial of your existence in your heart if you negate yourself in yourself definitely all lusts will automatically go away so that was to forget masib allah and this is to forget yourself you should try to forget yourself then you will become completely senseless then there would be no sense of neither this nor me so this is the first stage of becoming senseless he says when you will become senseless only then that particular sense would be revealed on to you a sense of his love sense of his nearness sense of his beauty sense of his closeness sense of piety sense of his friendship sense of the players of the divinity there are some other senses there are some other beauties which are totally hidden for us which are concealed which are never we unveiled for us because we are already prisoners to these lusts and these worldly senses unless you become out of this prison of lusts and prison of senses you will not be blessed with that great divine sense when sayyidina musa alayhi salam was on the peak of tur and he heard his voice kallam allah musa taklima when he heard him a wish came into his heart a wish emerged in his heart and he asked almighty allah rabbi arini anzur ilaik o oh my lord unveil yourself to me i want to see you he said oh my lord unveil your beauty to me i am emphasizing on the word me unveil yourself to me on me so that i may see you so when he said and will to me and i want to see you this was a sense this was a sense which was differentiating between you and me in these words there was a sense which sense which was differentiating between you and me he had a sense at that time when he was speaking when he was asking when he was requesting he had a sense that i am me and he is he 
That's why he was asking him something for himself. This was the first sense. And when this sense exists, everybody has his own station. And these things apply to everyone according to his own position. For us, this principle would be applicable in our, according to our station. For great people would be applicable according to their position and station. And for Ambiya would be applicable according to their station. And for a Holy Prophet وسلم, would be applicable according to his station. The application of principle is variable. Varies from place to place, from person to person, from station to station. So don't consider that our position is similar to the position of a Prophet. No, I am talking about his position, his station. He asked him something about himself. So this was the sense which was prevailing. Arini anzur ilaik. What happened afterward? He was brought to a state of senselessness. Because in this question, there existed some sense. Sense of the Lord, existence of the Lord, and sense of himself. In this question, this question referred to that sense which was differentiating between his existence and his own self. Almighty Allah, after this question, sent a tajalli. And because of that tajalli, a small unveiling of his beauty, with that unveiling, what happened? He was put into the condition, put into the state of behosh. Mehram e ihosh juz behosh ne. He said, Musa, unless you are in the state of this hosh, this sense. You can't understand the reality. Now he put him into the state of senseless. Kharra Musa Saika. He became senseless. And that particular sense was taken away from him. This is the meaning of senseless. Doesn't mean the senselessness in medical sense. In the meaning of Dr. Zahid. Anesthesiastic senselessness, no. Doesn't mean in medical senseless, physical senselessness, no. He was made senseless. It means that that particular differentiating sense was taken away from him. He became senseless. And he became free of that sense. Then what happened? When he regained the sense, Quran says, Falamma afaka. When he returned to the sense, when he returned to that particular sense, so this is the second sense, not the first one. First sense was taken away from him. Falamma afaka. When he restored his sense, when he returned to his senses, when he came back to the state of sense, so if he came back to the state of same sense which he had before, so what was the point to making him senseless and again bringing to sense? So the whole process was to remove the first sense away from him and to confer the second sense onto him. Which Molana Rune is talking about. Sense onto him. Which Molana Rune is talking about. When he got the second sense, that was if afaqa. So after he got the second sense, then what did he say? Inni tubtu ilaik. He said, Oh Allah, I repent. On the question which I asked. Subhanallah. The new sense revealed the reality that 
when you ask then you don't get because asking differentiates for that particular so the new sense revealed on him he said i repent on what i asked on what i said i repent on that sense which prevailed in me before this senselessness so he asked this was an indication of that particular differentiating sense and he did not receive and what happened in laylatul isra wal miraj you can go through the whole hadith and hundreds of the statements and dozens of hadith on miraj holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right from the beginning of his journey from masjidul haram to the end of his journey qaba qausain aw adna up to the end of his journey he never asked almighty allah oh my allah reveal yourself to me reveal your beauty to me i want to see you he never asked allah the question which was asked by sayyidina musa al islam on tour holy prophet never asked that question because asking the question was the first sense and not asking from him was the second sense not asking was the second sense so he never asked reveal on to me i want to see you then since he never asked almighty allah you know what happened when he reached that end of his journey without asking anything without asking the unveiling of allah's beauty to him without any question then what happened when he reached that stage it is reported by imam bukhari in his al jami as sahih by sayyidina anas it is reported by imam bukhari and briefly the same narration same hadith just with the same isnad has been reported by imam muslim too so in this way this hadith achieved the status of muttafaq alai because imam bukhari reported it in detail and imam muslim with the same chain of authority the same isnad and sharikin and anas ibn malik he reports it by referring by this way it became muttafaq alai the holy prophet sir salam arrived at the end of his journey almighty allah came to him here sayyidina musa alai salam went to tour to ask him something and here holy prophet sir salam was called invited there and when he reached that stage almighty allah himself come to him and imam bukhari reports from anas ibn malik radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu dana al jabbar rabbul izza thumma tadalla fa kana qaba qawsayni aw adna almighty allah himself came near to him and then since he did not ask about the unveiling of his beauty so the almighty allah unveiled his beauty from his beloved prophet and the curtain was taken off and quran says ma zagh al basar wa ma taha and he saw the beauty of almighty allah so molana room says there are two kinds of senses you can't get the perfect sense the higher sense unless you become away from the first sense then molana room comes after mentioning these things about this sense particular sense and he says that this sense is always conferred on his oliya they are blessed his oliya of course the anbiya firstly and through them the oliya the great saints they are blessed with this sense the second sense because they are people of ruh people of spirit and they understand what the spirit talks about and now he changes his subject and says az khuda jo yam taufeeq adab
بے ادب محروم مانز فضل رب ہی سیز وین یو نو دیٹ دس سینس از بلیسڈ اینڈ کنفرڈ آن دا فرینڈز آف آل مائی ٹی اللہ دا سوفیا دا اورفا دا سینس اینڈ اولیا دے آر دا ونز ہیونگ دس سینس ہی سیز دین یو شوڈ آلویز ریسپیکٹ دیم اینڈ بیہیو دیم ود ریسپیکٹ آنر اینڈ ریورینس آلویز بیہیو دیم ود اسپیشل ریورینس اینڈ دوز ہو Respect them will get a part of Allah's blessing. And those who become disrespectful to Awliya, the holders and possessors of this sense, this nearness of Almighty Allah, they are deprived of Allah's special fadl and blessings. Then Mawlana Rum quotes here, Bodze gusta khi kusufe afta شد ازاد زیلے زی جرت رد دباب He mentions that particularly he quotes the incident of the sujood of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam He said the insolence non-respecting non-reverence of Iblis turned him from Azazil to Shaitan. This was that he did not appreciate the reverence. He did not perform the suju, the prostration of reverence for Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam and became disrespectful to him. So this act of disrespect to Sayyidina Adam, the beloved, Naib, deputy of Almighty Allah, made Azazil a shaitan. And Mawlana Rum says that you should always be always careful and you should be always respectful for Awliya. After that Mawlana Rum comes to narrate the story of the king and he states narrating the story of that king he says that let us ask almighty allah for the self control for discipline so that he may grant the adab the tawfiq of reverence for his great awliya and saints and he may not deprive us from the blessing of adab and blessing of reverence and he may not put us in the state of dis he may not make us disrespectful to his friends Now Molana Rum starts the story of the king and he says that a king and he says that king himself was a very pious king a spiritual man in olden days before holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was raised in olden days before his raising there was a king and he had the power both temporal and spiritual one day the king was on the highway along with his army men his guards his ministers his colleagues the king and he had the power both temporal and spiritual one day The king was on the highway along with his army men, his guards, his ministers, his colleagues. And he saw a handmaiden and the king was enthralled by her. He fell into her love. Now, since I have already explained that by king he means Ruh. Ruh is Sultan, is the head. He goes around and he found the nafs 
the handmaiden, that beautiful lady is the nafs, having many attractions in it. The nafs, nafs al-ammara, has many attractions within it. So he found that handmaiden or concubine, like a wife, a beautiful one, and he fell into her love, and he fell into the love of nafs. So Ruh, the king, the sultan, lost his own origin. After mentioning the reason of crying, he is connecting that because Ru is lost, the spirit is lost in the lusts of this world. Why? Because the spirit itself has fallen into love of the nafs. And the Ru has been deprived of the original players of the world of divinity. So sometimes, since it belongs to the divine world, Although it is lost, although the spirit is detracted, although the spirit has got misguided because of the love of nafs, and nafs, since nafs has got the control on the battlefield, nafs has got the control on the heart, nafs has got the soul, has got the control on the intellect, and nafs has got control on all the functionaries and organs of the body. So whole government of human life is now in the hands of nafs and because of this atmosphere the spirit has also come under the influence of nafs and coming under the influence of nafs Molana Rum is saying that the spirit has fallen into the love of nafs so since the ruh the spirit itself has fallen into the love of nafs it has been now cut off from the origin reed bed from its origin from its original world so although it has lost but sometimes it remembers his olden days sometimes the ruh like a reflection it remembers the old time which he had passed in his homeland sometimes it remembers the old company of other arwah the old company of Mala ul Ala, the old company of nearness of Almighty Allah, sometimes the Ruh recalls the words and voice of Almighty Allah, sometimes it recalls the prayers of worshipping, the prayers of prostration, the prayers of praises, the prayers of Noor in that world. So the Ruh is lost in darkness, and sometimes the sparks and the small remembrances come in it and she is confused sometimes when it thinks of divinity she starts crying when she feels itself fallen into the loves of love of nafs she is lost and in spite of being lost whenever she recalls and remembers the old days she starts crying and becomes upset so this is the basic unrestness within the spirit he says that the Ruh, the king, when fell into the love of that nafs, then he bought her. The Ruh, the king, bought that handmaiden to win his desire. The king bought her to win his desire. When she came to his house under his control, then after some days the king found that that handmaiden his beloved the nafs herself has become ill she has become ill she has become extremely sick Morana Rum quotes an example saying he had a pitcher but there was no water in it and when he got the water the pitcher was broken he bought her to fulfill his desire and when he started living with her just he found that she became an extre extremely sick and ill her illness disturbed the king and now the king 
called all doctors. He invited all doctors and tabibs and physicians to cure her, to treat her, to bring her back to health because now his life is in her life and her life is in danger. The life of nafs is in danger. Now the Ruh is living for nafs and nafs life itself is in danger. Mulana Rum says, Shahtabiba Jamakar Daz Chapurast Guft Jane Hardo Dar Daste Shumast. The king gathered the physicians of his time together from right and left and asked and said to them that life of us, both of us is in your hands. You should treat her. Now this is not matter of only her life, this is matter of my life too. If she is not cured and she dies, then I will die. Janiman Sahlas to jane janamust Dard mando khastam dar manamust He says that my life is of no account because she is the life of my life. When Ru falls into the love of soul, love of nafs, since Ru is pure, if it goes on the right path, it goes in a very beautiful way. And if it goes to the wrong path, because of its purity, it goes in a very speedy way. On both sides, her life is the life of my life. And not she, I am in pain, and I am wounded, and she is my remedy. If you cure her, so it means that I will come back to my life. And he says, whoever heals her, that is my life, will be on both sides. Her life is the life of my life, and not she, I am in pain, and I am wounded. And she is my remedy. If you cure her, so it means that I will come back to my life. And he says, whoever heals her, that is my life, will bear away with him my treasures and pearls and large and small, whatever I have, I will give him a lot. Whoever cures her. They all answered him saying, we will hazard our lives. We will try our best. We will put every possible effort of our intelligence and our experience and our ability, whatever. And we will stop our intelligence together, put together collectively, and we will try our best to cure her and to bring her to her life. And then they claimed, Molana Room says, every physician, each one claimed. What did they claim? They said, Hariyake Azma Masih Alamest Har Alamra Darkafe Ma Marhamest. He says that every one of us is Messiah. This is the claim. Every one of us is like a messiah of the world and in our hand is every medicine for every person. He says we are competent enough to cure her. Now you may think why Maulana Rum has quoted these words and dialogue. He explains here that all those doctors and physicians who were called and then just the next uh, word, the next verse 
ازمرز چومو شد چشم شا از اشک خو چو جو شد He says the more cures and remedies they applied all possible medicines and treatments they applied the more did the illness increase and all remedies could not fulfill the need their treatment was completely failure by this Molana room says that oh simple people of this world all these physicians what does he mean by the physicians he said these were ulama zahir in every alim of zahir claims i am the messiah of the world i am the biggest scholar of the world i am the one having highest caliber of knowledge i have answer to every question i can cure every illness I can do everything whatever you want. So he says these are the ulama zahir do claim but if you give your illness in their hands for treatment instead of curing you they will make you more sick. And don't go in the hands of just ulama zahir they are tabiban e naqisa. They themselves are imperfect physicians they never know the real diagnostic things they have no treatment in their hand they just give the speeches they are just related to books and not related to the world of divine blessings they are blind they are arrogant and in ilmu zahir there is no treatment for nafs no treatment for qalb no treatment for ruh so this is what molana room wants to give the message and when the king understood that they have nothing to deliver these the ulama and the peers who are in fact not the shuyukh not salihin not arifin not ashikin but they are just they pose to be like that and these ulama naqisin when he realized that they cannot cure my patient then he went to almighty allah and fell in prostration and requested to allah so that he may send some tabib a kamil perfect physician for him sick girl became like a hair thin as a hair while the eyes of the king flowed with tears of blood like a river and when the king saw that all these scholars and these tabibs and physicians and doctors they are powerless they are helpless so he ran barefooted to the mosque he entered the mosque and directly advanced to the mihrab to pray he opened his lips he praised almighty allah he cried and he said that oh allah from depth of his soul depth of his heart he raised a cry a supplication and almighty allah gave him the sea of bounty a sea of bounty began to surge for him almighty allah started showering his blessing on him why because now he realized that my treatment is not in the hands of al ulama az zahirun there should be somebody else who could really treat me then almighty allah gave him his tiding when he came back and he was sleeping he saw a dream and this was the answer and acceptance of his crying and his prayings and he got a tiding good news that tomorrow 
you will see a stranger. He will come for you. And when he comes, you should understand that he is the skilled physician. He is the perfect physician. And you should trust in him. And I have given a magic in his hands. Now he comes to the Sheikh Kamil. That the cure and treatment of these illness, spiritual illnesses, are not in the hands of those who are striving and struggling for the lusts of the world. Whenever the summer comes and these months come, lot many physicians come to England and come to states and come to western world. Just for pounds, just for dollars, just for your pockets. And most of you people just receive them as they are perfect physicians. Allow them to stay in your houses and their eyes are always on your pockets, on the pounds. And they start giving you wazifas. And in the same way, then they have broadened their spectrum, expanded their spectrum. Instead of going from house to house, they have started sitting in the TV channel. And you are asking the wazifas and putting the questions and they are solving your problem. This is how they say, everybody of us is a Masiha. Somebody is suggesting you to measure your clothes. Somebody giving you wazifa, close your eyes, do this, read this. And I want to tell you, nothing of all these silly things belong to tasawwuf and suluk and taika and marifa. This is just mis misguidance. These are money makers. Somebody is suggesting you to measure your clothes. Somebody giving you wazifa, close your eyes, do this, read this. And I want to tell you, nothing of all these silly things belong to tasawwuf and suluk and taika and marifa. This is just mis misguidance. These are money makers. And the people, the TV and channel owners who are doing this, they have nothing to do with the service of Deen. This is just their business. They have to earn money. They may get from any way. Whether they get it from bringing a blame to Deen or bringing a wrong name to Tasawwuf and Suluk and Tariqah and Marifa, whether to Put deen and tasawwuf and suluk, mazallah, astaghfirullah, in a hell, whether they can bring the singers, or they can bring the dancers, or they can bring the magicians, or they can bring these characters. doing damage to Allah's deen and holy prophet Syria and doing a great damage to Marifa and Tariqa and Suluk. Suluk is this what Maulana Rum has mentioned. This is Tasawwuf. The Awliya Allah in 14, 13 centuries of Islam never did and never recommended these silly kinds of acts which are being recommended through TV in the name of Sufi Baba and Peer Baba and Peer Online and, and uh, I don't know what is happening over here. In the name of Tasawwuf and Tariqa and Marifa, there can't be any bigger enmity of Islam and Deen and Sharia and Tariqa, Suluk and Marifa and Tasawwuf bigger than this. And who are their customers? We. Who are their customers? Do they get their customers from heavens? Tell me. From Bradford, <laughs> from Nelson, from London, from Belgium, from England. People living in England and UK, highly qualified families. Western families living here, having awareness, having consciousness, having knowledge. The people who came here 30, 40 years before, they are quite conscious and they are well aware of the things. And they are sending pounds like the rivers and like seas on them. 
and the iman of the new generations is being distorted this is what molana room is stating that these are the wrong claimant of sufi peers then the sheikh the salih who was allah's friend and who was sent by almighty god he came and he started treating and curing that girl he asked the king that i want some seclusion if you leave us all together alone just briefly finalizing and the whole thing he put his hands the king gave them a privacy he put his hands on the pulse of that lady of that girl now he starts the diagnostic process he put his hands on the pulse and then he started asking various questions from her various questions from her where are you are from my daughter which is your city the king open his hands no no and that perfect physician that tabib kamil sheikh kamil started asking various questions while putting his hands on her pulse he went on asking various questions and he was watching the color of her face the palpitation of her pulse the condition of her eyes he was inspecting each and everything he saw her pain he saw her concern and he understood that something is wrong with her and the illness is not related to her body illness is related to her heart and he understood that he has fallen she herself has fallen into love of someone king has fallen into love of her ruh has fallen into love of nafs and nafs itself has fallen into love of something else nafs became the beloved of ruh spirit and the soul who has become the beloved of the spirit itself has become lover of something else he wanted to trace diagnose who is the beloved of nafs beloved of soul this was the diagnostic process and then morana room says that the ailment of the lover is separate from all other ailments and the ailment of love cannot be understood unless somebody has experienced the ailment of love so he very gently went on asking where is your native town he he said to that girl that for every suitable all people of each town is separate so tell me which is your native town and then he asked she told this is my that is my town he asked who are your relatives who are your friends over there just name me name them she started naming one by one he asked about her kinships her relationships her friendships her companies which she used to have in her native town he was an expert while he was asking the questions he was carefully putting hands and fingers on her pulses and watching the palpitation of the pulse and he was watching the color of her face went on listening to her story which he continued and he was watching carefully the beating of pulse so that whatsoever name her pulse should begin to throb he would understand the here lies the object of her soul of her nafs here lies the desire of her nafs he continued up to the friends or relatives or cities towns from town to town 
she mentioned the name of a certain town then she mentioned the name of another town then she mentioned the name of another town and this was the process going on finally he was asking about various towns and finally when he asked about Samarkand a city near Bukhara when he reached to that city the reason of asking is that there are lot many ailments of nafs when nafs is ill soul is ill and soul falls into love of something it doesn't mean that every soul will get into love with gains with wealth with money you know, there are different ailments of nafs somebody's soul has fallen into love of money somebody's soul has fallen into love of the position somebody's soul has fallen into love of the power somebody's soul has fallen into love of his children somebody's soul has fallen into the sexual loves and lusts and propensities somebody's soul has fallen into love of arrogance somebody's soul has fallen into love of various other worldly players so this ailment differs from man to man from soul to soul from person to person so the Kamil physician the perfect one he diagnoses which kind of ailment does exist in this particular soul what his soul has fallen into love of various other worldly players so this ailment differs from man to man from soul to soul from person to person so the Kamil physician the perfect one he diagnoses which kind of ailment does exist in this particular soul what kind of love so if he diagnoses the exact nature of love the exact nature of concern the exact nature of connection of that soul to certain particular object only then he would be in a position to suggest any treatment and treatment for every ailment would be different for A would be different apparently souls of 10 people are ailing they are sick they are ill but the treatment for each and every soul would be different because of the nature of the ailment so he when he named Samarkand a big city Taba Pursi Az Samar Kande Chukan Ah Sar De Barkashi Da Maharu Ab Az Chashmashrava Shudham Chuju Her pulse remained in its normal state unimpaired undisturbed till he asked about Samarkand and Maulana Rum says the Samarkand the city of Kand the city of sweet the city of sugar sweet city of Samarkand he says that her pearls jumped when he took the name of Samarkand and her face went red and pale started turning and for she had been parted he found that she had been parted from some man who lives in Samarkand and then he started asking about various professions various professions one by one and when he came to the name of goldsmith her purse again started jumping palpitation was very very fast and her tears started coming out of her eyes like rivers and canals he knew that there is her object of the nafs is in Samarkand 
and there is somebody who is goldsmith and this nafs has fallen into love of the goldsmith why molana room chose a goldsmith because of gold gold is a symbol of world gold is symbol of worldly gains material gains money wealth gold is a symbol so zargar means the worldly gains he found that she the nafs has fallen into love of his zargar of a goldsmith when he realized then he got the address an exact city she told the city in samarkand the the exact place that is ghatfar then he asked that girl let's keep the secret in your heart don't disclose it to everybody anyone inshallah i will cure you and what do you mean curing the nafs there were two different meaning she thought as if i am going to get my love and according to him then i will purify you finally and from amara i will upgrade and promote you to the stage of mutmainna and radiya mardiya you will come out of this ailment so that tabib that physician came to the king and asked that now there is a person a goldsmith in samarkand i want him to come here send some of your very trustworthy representatives and ministers to samarkand and invite him in your palace this was the best plan so goldsmith was summoned from his country and gold and rebels and some other things very very costly things as gift were sent to him why because duniya is pleased with duniya if you send duniya ahl duniya are pleased so this is another indication if you send them they are pleased and happy with you if you take duniya away from them they become angry so he sent some experts and competent advisors or ministers to him when that goldsmith saw the much of wealth and money robes he was influenced impressed and he left his town his city his business and his children for dunia and came to the palace of king when that person the goldsmith arrived goldsmith now means dunia arrived in the palace of king the palace of ruh arrived the physician brought him to the presence of the king he was regarded very nicely welcomed and the king the sultan gave him a lot of gold and asked him to prepare some jewelry to prepare some jewelry so he got busy in preparing the jewelry and physician suggested the king the ru i want that this goldsmith and this handmaid and this lady they should get married they should live together for it for some time that's why up now molana room after breaking the sequence of his story he brought lot of many verses praising the shuyukh e kamil sheikh e kamil so that he may establish the great trust in him because as the part of his treatment he was going to suggest him that you should give your beloved in the marriage of the goldsmith can a lover be ready to marry his beloved to somebody else so this was a very very strong and difficult decision so that's why molana room has mentioned that if you develop your full trust and full confidence in sheikh kamil then whatever command and order he gives you will never be disturbed and you will accept 
there must be some hikmah in it. And you will sacrifice your own thoughts. This was the point. That's why Maulana Room brought many verses which I have left. He said, the wali sees with the nur of Allah. Wali received the guidance from Almighty Allah. Whatever wali says behind that is the hikmah given by Almighty Allah. All these things has been said by Maulana Room to create a complete trust, a complete confidence in Shaykh Kamil. So that what the people do, if Shaykh Kamil advises them something according to their wish, according to their standards, according to their likings, according to their preferences, then they are happy with this decision and they accept his advice. And if Shaykh advises something against their wish, then they become upset and they start criticizing the Shaykh. They start criticizing the decision of Shaykh. They start criticizing the hikmah of the decision of Shaykh. Why? Because he said and advised something which is not suitable to the wishes of their nafs. Which does not suit to the wishes of their nafs. So they become upset and they start criticizing the Shaykh. They start criticizing the decision of Shaykh. They start criticizing the hikmah of the decision of Shaykh. Why? Because he said and advised something which is not suitable to the wishes of their nafs. Which does not suit to the wishes of their nafs. So Maulana Room quoted here, explained here, the position of Shaykh so that you may develop your complete confidence and trust and faith in Shaykh Kamil. That when time comes, that he advises you in order to treat you, in order to cure you, in order to bring you out of the ambit of the evils of the nafs. And he wants to bring you out of the damaging evils of nafs. He wants to bring you out of the lust of this world. He wants to bring you out of the strong clutches of your nafs. The nafs which has made you imprisoned, which have, have a complete control on you, on your heart, on your mind, on your intellect, on your likings, on your thinking, everything is, has become slave of your nafs. And your sheikh is saying something against, now against your Lord. Now we have made our nafs as our ilah. We are worshipping our nafs. We are totally under control of our nufus. We are totally disciplined, organized and ordered and commanded by the rule of nafs. And we are functioning in all of, in all of our lives, in each and every aspect, in each and every direction. Whatever nafs wants, we are just slave and we work according to his wish. If Sheikh advises something which pleases your nafs, you would be happy with him. If he advises something which is not a matter of pleasure for your nafs, your nafs will become arrogant, will become disobedient. And his disobedience will make you arrogant, will make you disobedient. Here lies the link and relationship between the story and this subject. So the Tabib Kamil, Sheikh Kamil suggested him that I suggest you that since he will be staying here, their link shouldn't be an illicit link. They should get married. They should live together. So the king, since he had developed a complete faith and a complete confidence in him, so accepted his advice. And the goldsmith was married with that girl, the beloved of the roof, the beloved of the king. He was married. What happened then? When they started living together, the goldsmith prepared a certain syrup. You should keep in your mind that this is a story. Imam Hazrat Maulana Rum wants to explain something to you in a metaphorical language, in a figurative language. 
and take it similar to the story of Sayyidina Musa and Khidr. Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Khidr that he committed, performed certain acts which even Sayyidina Musa Islam couldn't understand at that time and he had to explain them later. So there would be certain things coming which a common sense does not accept and does not recognize and does not realize. But keep in your mind this is a metaphorical thing. He wants to give you a lesson. So Maulana Rum says that that physician, the Sheikh Kamil, prepared a syrup, a medicine, a syrup, apparently which was sweet. And he started giving him the goldsmith. And in fact that was a poison. He provided the company, he provided the nafs with the company of dunya, the company of zar, the company of goldsmith, the company of his love. And then what he did, he started giving a syrup to the goldsmith, which was a poison, and he started becoming ill. He started becoming ill. And here Molana Rum again quotes, that don't be upset with this that he started, why did he start giving him poison? He said, if you can't understand, then try to understand this poisoning in the light of the event when Musa alayhi salam broke the ship of those two people. And he broke the ship, apparently, and Musa alayhi salam asked, why have you broken the ship of these two guys who have provided us a facility and have not charged from us? They were so generous with us and you have broken their ship, their boat, in the end Sayyidina Khidr alayhi salam replied and explained the reason, the cause. He said the reason why I broke the boat was that there was a king coming behind. Any boat which was in a beautiful form, very perfect form, very nice form, he was taking away from the owners for his own use. And those boats which were broken, he was just leaving the broken boards for them, for the owners. Since they were generous to us, they were kind to us, so I have broken their boat to protect it from the king. And the king is shaitan and the boat is nafs. Boat of nafs. And king is shaitan. And shaitan looks into our nufus. And if he finds his nafs is quite healthy, beautiful, well-maintained, well-maintained, sleeps well, eats well, speaks well, dresses well, and his nafs is quite arrogant, quite proud, beautiful, with all worldly beauties. His nafs seems to be lovely to shaitan. He captures that particular nafs and brings in his control. When nafs goes into his control, then ruh, the spirit is again isolated. Because the same story which I told you last night takes place. And Sayyidina Khidr -Islam stated that I wanted to save the nafs of the human being from the control of shaitan. And only those nafus will be saved and protected which are broken. Hi, hi, hi which are broken and the nafs which is broken is chosen by, by, by Almighty Allah and the nafs which is very beautiful would be chosen by Shaitan. Allama Iqbal says Tu bacha bacha ke na rakh ise Tera aina hai wo aina Kishi kasta ho to aziz tar Hai niga hai aina saaz mein Don't keep your heart and nafs saved. Let it be broken. Only those hearts and souls are chosen by Almighty Allah which are broken. 
so he wanted to break the nafs and for breaking the nafs he wanted to take the love of dunya the love of world lust of the world out of the heart of nafs and how he wanted to show the real face of dunya to the nafs real face what is the real face of dunya and where lies the real beauty of dunya so he went on giving the poison in the form of syrup he became ill became sick and when he became ill and sick here morana room says and every day the lady his wife now used to take food to his room and they used to sit together and talk together and because of some problem in his health bad stomach what happened his color was gone away the red color beautiful color on his face went away his eyes were not those eyes which attracted that lady his face was not that face his beauty was not that beauty he became ill he became black he became pale and he lost all of his beauty lost all of his beauty and here molana room again repeats that oh my sons why you love those things whose beauty is not permanent try to love them. those whose beauties are permanent and everlasting and ever and not ending endless beauty a day came when that lady brought food for him and when she saw him she was always when she used to come she always used to talk with him for a long time used to sit with her that day came she brought the food and that lady saw her gradually as he was becoming ill and sick and he was losing the beauty gradually day by day she was losing getting rid of his love the more he was losing his beauty the more she was getting rid of his love and the day came when she brought the food she just put the food there and she didn't bother to look at him he had become so ugly he had become so ugly that she didn't look at her and finally he died when the whole love of that world duniya was taken away from the soul rather she started hating him she started hating sitting with him hating talking with him hating looking at him when she didn't love him and she didn't like him at all after that that world the symbol zargar the symbol of world he was put to death and since the love had gone away from the soul's heart so she came back towards ruh so when the nafs got rid of the love of dunya now there was no other attraction left for nafs so when there was no attraction love in for attraction left for nafs in the world then automatically then there are the higher and the best attractions for her is the attraction of ruh so the lady returned back to the king and got married again with the king now she was no more handmaid and now she was his wife he got married with her he got married with her and at another place explaining the same phenomena a man fell into love of a lady and molana room says that the tabib e kamil sheikh e kabil put them together and started giving the same syrup poison to the lady beautiful lady and she started becoming sick when she became ugly he did not bother to look at her even a single for a single minute he left speaking with her he left looking at her sitting with her 
he hated her sitting with her he he started hating her then the tabib e kamil came and he asked oh man you were the one who used to love her who used to die for her who used to live for her and you were never ready to uh, be away and be apart and detached from her for a single moment and now you are the same person you are not ready to have a single glance at her face what change has occurred into her what change has occurred into her what has come out of that girl why your love has gone away and again the same statement of molana room when sheikh e kamil speaks to that person this is the same treatment with the zarga with the man and here the same treatment with the nafs ask he ask khadim ke jism se kya kam hua aaj tera ishq kyun bedam hua he is asking why your ishq has dead why your love has gone jism se kya cheez rukhsat ho gayi jis se tujhko itni nafrat ho gayi yes what has happened to her your beloved what has come out of her that you are not ready to look at her you are hating her your own beloved what thing has left her body and what has come out from her body sheikh ne phir tasht dikhlaya use batn se nikla tha jo sunga aaya use he asked his relatives her relatives because of her motions diarrhea which was the result of that poison your know, food poisoning because of that diarrhea and con and continuous poisoning make a big place and keep putting whatever whenever she goes for toilet she should use the same one place and don't remove the stool and things from there whatever comes out of her belly just cover it and keep it at one place don't clean it so it kept on for 40 days more than 40 days when she was just an ugly looking and he did not bother to see at her and he left her love from his heart then sheikh took him come on she is the same lady same person whom you love too much and you are ready to die for her nothing has gone away nothing has departed from her same head same forehead same hair same eyes same cheek same body everything is same not same eyes same cheek same body everything is same nothing is changed except come with me there is only one thing which has come out of her body there is one thing which has come out from her body and we have kept it we have not removed it so that you may see this is what was inside her except this thing everything is already with her and he showed that place where her stool and whatever she went in the toilet was already present for the last 40 days he showed that place to him phir kaha ke dekh e talib ise sirf ye nikla hai iske jism se 
پس تیرا معشوق یہ گند خانہ ہے تو اسی کا آہ بس دیوانہ ہے it means that this whole thing and he ran away he said I don't want to see it it is so smelly so dirty I don't want to see it he said we haven't brought anything from out this has come out from your beloved it means that when this dirt which you are not ready to see it which you are not ready to smell it which you are not ready to stay near it when this whole dirt was in her body you used to love her when this dirt came out of her body you left loving her that's why bas tera mashuk ye gand khana hai it means you love this gand this dirt this is your this dirt is your impure thing this dirty thing is your beloved tu isi ka aah bas deewana hai husn jab mushil se pheeka pad gaya ishq ka bazaar thanda pad gaya it mean this was the beauty this is the whole sum of beauty when this was in her body she was beautiful she used to love her when this has come out of her body the whole market of ishq is closed now and after giving these examples talib e haq ho gaya bas munfail اپنی غلطی پر ہوا بے حد خجل رستگاری نفس کی زنجیر سے پا گیا مرشد کی ایک تدبیر سے بڑا روم سے that he was the مرشد he didn't snub him he didn't said hard words neither to him nor to her I mean not to kalb nor to heart nor to nafs he just did treatment wisely and showed the reality of beauty of this world and Maulana Rum wants to explain oh my brothers and oh my sons oh my daughters we are lost in this dirty love of world we are lost in dirty attractions of world and this dirt is the reality and truth of attractions nothing else then Monana Rum says oh who worship the sun you have never seen the sun at the time of sunset you have never seen the sun setting everything who comes on his blossom it has to set down too everything which rises it will set you see the moon in 14th of night in full swing but try to see it when this is just like air you see in the beauty when somebody is young try to see the same when he is in his old age when he can't when she can't see when she coughs when all beauty is gone away and he or she is just an ugly personality by giving all these examples Moulana Rome wants to convey the message that unfortunately because of very very beautiful attractions in this world nafs has become slave of the world and the beauties of world and the lusts of world and attractions of world and because of these attractions nafs looks very beautiful and ruh in this world has lost its battle and the ruh the sultan the spirit has also become slave of this nafs and if the ruh remains slave of this nafs 
then ru malakuti will remain ru hayawani and you will remain aswala safilin worse than the animals now in order to get rid of this animalistic life in order to get rid of this evil world evil attractions to get rid of this deceptions the only way is to reduce the love of world from your nafs and nafs is makara deceives he provides the attractions of actions of world and money and wealth in front of you in various captions in the forms of needs in the form of necessities in the form of requirements various headings are given to this world various titles are given to this world this is how you are catched this is how you are deceived and with these deceptions of captions deceptions of headings you just go towards dunya and lust of dunya and then you are lost in that lust when do when you are lost dunya and shaitan gets control of your nafs when nafs is being controlled by shaitan and dunya it remains nafs ammara and if the nafs is the strongest hold the strongest position in the government of your body then the ruh the sultan itself becomes its slave or at least becomes in its influence or at least it becomes under control of the nafs so if the whole world of your body is under the control of nafs it means you are under the control of shaitan if you live your life under the control of shaitan you are totally cut off from rahman from the heavens because of this ulterior attractions inferior attractions so you are cut off from the superior world so the whole theme of the message of molana ru and each and every sufi and every arif and every wali and every saint and message of every prophet and message of holy prophet sallallahu taala alaihi wa alihi wasallam is to get rid of this evil attractions of nafs qad aflaha man zakkaha he is successful who got rid of the grip and rid of the control of nafs through process of purification purification of what purification of nafs and soul from what from the lusts from attractions of this world from deceptions of this world and qad khaba man dasaha and he is ruined who was trapped misguided detracted and who went into the control of the evils of nafs so no knowledge would be beneficial my daughters dear daughters and sons the scholars the ulama the participants no knowledge would be beneficial for you and for me no knowledge would be nafi no knowledge would be useful no knowledge would lead us to the divinity no knowledge would lead us to the nauses of allah's attributes no knowledge would lead us to the friendship of almighty allah and no knowledge and science would lead us to the divine world unless we get rid of the grip and control of nafs nafs has many attractions and deceptions to detract us and we are always indulged involved engaged in these deceptions and these this independence and freedom of nafs comes first of all through the link with the suhba link with some pious company link with sheikh it doesn't mean just to make bay'a with the hands it is not compulsory put hands in hands is a recommended way but it is not mandatory it is not imperative it is not compulsory this is unanimous view 
This is a way of declaration of your loyalty. The basic thing is your intention, your irada, your niya, your decision of your heart, decision of your mind, decision of your being attached with some company. Because the spirit of declaration of your loyalty, the basic thing is your intention, your irada, your niya, your decision of your heart, decision of your mind, decision of your being attached with some company. Because the spiritual pious company is the actual fountain of Hidayah. And then this company and attachment, only company and attachment is never, never, never sufficient for you and beneficial for you unless you put yourself in Riyadha. A sohba and then Riyadha. The struggle for purification of nafs. First is Sohba. And Sohba is with two, th three things. There would be no company. No company is acceptable, accepted as company. No Sohba would be accepted as Sohba. And no Sohba would be beneficial and useful as a Sohba. Unless the Sohba, the company, fulfills three conditions. First, love of whom you are the company with. Loving him, following him, serving him. Love, following and serving. And the best sohba in this universe is the sohba of Holy Prophet Muhammad either directly or through someone. This is the ultimate sohba which everybody wants to get and everybody should make its objective either directly or through somebody because to get sohba and connection with Holy Prophet through somebody this is the chain this is the chain how you get connected with one by one one by one up to Holy Prophet and sohba is with following if you don't follow so there is no sohba if you don't love those who are beloved of Almighty Allah Love for sake of Allah. This is no, there is no sohba. And if you're not in their khidma, there is no sohba. So this is the sohba, the company. But only sohba and company would never be useful and beneficial. I mean decisively useful and decisively beneficial, although it has its own benefits. It won't be decisively useful unless you accompany this company with Riyadha, Tazkiyah, the process of purification, the endeavors, the efforts, spiritual efforts, if you don't start sitting on Musalla during nights, if you not start sleeplessness in your life, if you keep on sleeping, and if you keep on eating, and if you keep on speaking, then it means all fountains of divinity are closed in your nafs, closed in your heart. With sohbah, you have to do certain efforts. al riyada al tazkiya al ihsan al mujahada Only with mujahada you get muraqaba, you get mulahaza. And then you get mushahada. And then you get mukhataba. And then you get mushafaha. These are outcomes. No soba would be benefit, beneficial totally unless you combine the riyada, your efforts in ta'a of Almighty Allah, in obedience of Almighty Allah, in worship of Almighty Allah, in love of Almighty Allah, in your efforts in zuhud, in abstinence for Almighty Allah, protecting yourself from every haram, living a life of halal, Living a life in the following of the Sunnah of Holy Prophet, working according to the Sunnah of Holy Prophet, working according to the Seerah of Holy Prophet, walking in the footsteps of Holy Prophet, unless you achieve the Ittiba, unless you achieve Ta'atun Nabi, unless you achieve the connection with Holy Prophet, you act upon the teachings of Holy Prophet. You get nothing from Sohbah. And then, 
more and more efforts and endeavors you make in following the more noor, the more qurb, the more nearness, the more blessing you get. That's why the people who got everything, they used to pray the Salatul Fajr with Wuzu of Isha for 40 years in their life. This was Imam Azam Abu Hanifa. Many of Tabi'een, many Taba Tabi'een, many Awliya. The life of Imam Malik, the life of Imam Shafi'i, the life of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, the life of the great Tabi'een of that time, the light of great Imams, the life of Junaid al Baghdadi, the life of Bishr al Hafi, the life of Sari al Sakati. The light of Aima of Ahl 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 Bayt. The life of Sayyidah Fatima to Zahra. They used, she used to prostrate till the Fajr time arrived. And she gets up from her prostration, from her sujood, and asks, O oh Almighty Allah, in the winter, winter, when the nights are very long, very big, she says, You have made so short nights that I can't make a full, just one sajda for you. The life of Imam Bukhari, the life of Imam Muslim, the life of Sayyidina Sheikh Abdul Qadir al-Jilani, the life of Sheikh Suhrawardi, the life of Imam Shazili, Ridwanullah Ta'ala Alayhi Majma'een. Everybody, Allama Iqbal says, Kuch haath nahi aata be ahe sahar gahi. Unless you cry in the last hours of the night, unless you cry in the darkness, this is the best time when you come on Musalla, when everybody is sleeping. Then Almighty Allah comes on the first heaven. He himself asks, is there anybody to ask me, I am ready to give? Is there anybody to forgive, to ask for my pardon? I am here to forgive him. Is there anybody to raise hands in front of me? I am ready to fold his hands. So here you are connected with Almighty Allah through ta, through ibadah, through sujood, through purity, through zuhud, through vara. Then you get the reality of iman. Then your heart is full of noor. Then you are a bashar, but better than a malak. You walk on the face of earth, but you are praised in the heavens. You are praised in the heavens. Almighty Allah then mention you in the company of angels. And Almighty Allah asks his angels, have you seen my dead person? How beautiful worshipper, how beautiful lover is he? Almighty Allah himself asks his angels. And in Sahih Muslim, he calls Jibreel alayhi salam. And Almighty Allah then says, O oh Jibreel, you know that particular person who lives in that town? Almighty Allah lay names someone. Hadith is Sahih in Muslim. Jibreel Amin says, Yes, Almighty Allah, I know him. What do you want me to do for him? Almighty Allah says, I just want to inform you that I love him. We, are, we have never tasted the love of Almighty Allah. And what would be the position of those people who are loved by Almighty Allah? We have never thought of becoming lover of Allah. And there are the people who are beloved by Almighty Allah. Almighty Allah asks, says Jibreel, says to Jibreel, Jibreel, you know that person? Yes, oh my Lord, I know him. He says, just I want to tell you, I love him. Allah, inni yuhibbu. Just I love him. Who is saying these words? Allah says, I love him. What does it mean? Allah becomes lover of his own servant. This is how Quran explains, Yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbunahum. 
there are some people yuhibbunahu those who love almighty allah and there are some people yuhibbuhum that allah himself loves them loves them some are the lovers of allah and some are the beloveds of almighty allah so almighty allah reveals this thing to jibril that i love him then jibril asks then what should i do what i am supposed to do so almighty allah says jibril if you are my true servant i also want you to love him this is the response this is the return of love i want you to love him jibril amin says almighty allah you be witness i also love him because you love him so this is the place where story of love starts from jibril says i also love him then jibril amin asked almighty allah what i am supposed further to do almighty allah says go in the heavens and announce my love in front of all angels tell them that i love that person oh my allah then what is is there any specific commandment for them to accept this announcement almighty allah says yes there is a commandment for them to announce there in the heavens that i love that particular person on the earth and all angels of this heaven should also love him so that person becomes mahboobullah jibril says i also love him then jibril amin asked almighty allah what i am supposed further to do almighty allah says go in the heavens and announce my love in front of all angels tell them that i love that person oh my allah then what is is there any specific commandment for them to accept this announcement almighty allah says yes there is a commandment for them to announce there in the heavens that i love that particular person on the earth and all angels of this heaven should also love him so that person becomes mahboobullah then he becomes mahboob jibril then he becomes mahboobul malaika so jibril i mean comes and announce yunadi fi as-sama inna allah yuhibbu fulanan fa hibbuhu fa yuhibbuhu ahlu as-sama he makes an announcement that almighty allah loves him that person i also love him and allah wants all of you to love him too fa yuhibbuhu ahlu as-sama then holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stated then all angels of the divine world start loving him this is how that beloved of almighty allah becomes beloved of the whole divine world thumma yudau lahu alqabul fi al-ard and then it is stated to the angels oh angels you go down to the world and then the love of that particular person is laid down in the earth laid down in this world in the hearts of people so this love with the of the beloved people the pious people the people who are ahlu zuhd the people who left the love of a world for the sake of allah's love the people who accepted unrestness to get to get rest in love of almighty allah the people who became sleepless for the sake of company of almighty allah the people who have left all kind of worldly attractions of the attractions and wishes evil wishes of their nafs evil wishes just for the sake of divine attractions of almighty allah and you know what are the divine attractions for some people jannah may be the divine attraction it is some people higher grades of paradise 
these are the divine attractions and of course these are Jannatul Adhan is divine attraction Jannatul Firdaus is divine attraction but there are some people even when they start loving our almighty Allah then they don't find any attraction even in Jannah they don't find any attraction even in the blessings of Jannah they don't find any attraction even in the beauties of Jannah they don't find any attraction even in Hur and Qusur and it comes in Hadith they would be standing there Almighty Allah will ask them are you pleased with what you have been given everybody in Jannah in paradise would say yes my Lord I am pleased we are pleased and Almighty Allah will ask them do you need anything more try to be entitled to that point make yourself entitled to that question where Allah will ask do you need anything more Allah will ask become such pious loyal to Almighty Allah so that he may ask it a time will come then he will ask his loyal friends his lovers do you need anything more and you know what the, what the servants would say they said nothing O our Lord you have given us everything you have forgiven us you have protected us from hell you have placed us in Jannah and you have given all blessings which were promised through the mouth of Holy Prophet Sallallahu We have got everything. Here the time would come when he would say, Ziyadah, there is something more with me for you. It is stated, some people will keep quiet. He will ask the angels, go and ask them, when everybody is happy, and everybody is saying we got everything which was promised to us why these certain people are silent ask them they would be asked and they will say we got everything of Jannah but tell to our Lord we didn't became sleepless for these whores we didn't become sleepless for these kusurs. We didn't become sleepless for these canals and rivers of Jannah. We didn't become sleepless for these blessings and gardens of Jannah. All blessings which we have been given, which we have been granted, we never left the attractions of the world for these things. Then they will ask, what was the thing which prompted you to leave all dunya world attraction, worldly attractions he said we just heard from somebody from somebody and he is the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam innana sami'na munadiyan yunadi lil iman and he announced and he told us and we received through chains that those who will become the true and extreme lovers of Almighty Allah and they will throw away all attractions of world for the sake of attraction of beauty of Allah attraction of the divine world attraction of his divine mercy attraction of his player attraction of his nearness so I will bless them with my beauty with my vision they would be able to see me I will unveil my beauty for them they said we are waiting for that time we left everything we left our beds we left our beds we left all attractions we left all loves all lusts just for the sake so that we may see your beauty to have a glance of your face 
the Almighty Allah says, yes, it is for you. Then the veil would be removed and Almighty Allah will say, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. As-salamu alaykum. They will raise their eyes. They will say, who are you? Who are you? He will say, I am your Rabb. Ana Rabbukum. And then Holy Prophet said the words of Hadith are فَيَنْزُرُونَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَيَنْزُرُ إِلَيْهِمْ يَنْزُرُ إِلَيْهِمْ وَيَنْزُرُونَ إِلَيْهِمْ Then he will start looking into their eyes and they will keep on looking to him, to his beauty, into his beauty. And this would be the end of our journey. No blessing higher than this. Higher than Ridwan and higher than Ghilman and higher than Janan, higher than Janan and higher than Ghilman and higher than Ridwan. Just Ru'ya of Almighty Allah and we of His beauty. His beauty would be unveiled for those persons. <laughs> My dear sons and daughters, we are deceived in this world. Everybody has been caught here or there in some wrong deceptions. And daughters, we are deceived in this world. Everybody has been caught here or there in some wrong deceptions. We are misguided. We are not on the proper lines Try to change your life. I want all of you to become so pious, so pure, so obedient to Almighty Allah, so submissive, so full of nur and light, so that you may be enabled for that question that what else do you want? And then you may be able to say, Oh, our Lord, just we want to have a glance of your beautiful face and then the curtain is removed and yanzuru ilayhim wa huwa yanzuruna ilayh hum yanzuruna ilayh what do you think is that beauty better or these beauties of world are better which is the better attraction between the two of course that Attraction of Allah's beauty, an attraction of Allah's pleasure, an attraction of Allah's nearness, an attraction of the divine world, which, which has to come in life hereafter, that is much, much better than this, in which we are lost. So just try to understand this whole story, this message. And after you understand this message, then Make a decision in your life, in your minds, that now we are going to start a change. And if you are changed, inshallah, the whole world of Islam will change. Wama alayna illa al